Alright, before I start talking about Nolan, I would like to warn you that this video contains spoilers for all of his movies except for Dunkirk and The Prestige, as those two don't really have villains. But wait, wait, wait. If you haven't watched all of Nolan's movies, you don't have to click off this video. I have put timestamps in the description for each of the sections of the video, and I have labeled these with the movie I'm talking about in that section, so you can just hop around the video to hear my opinions about the Nolan movies you have watched, without getting spoiled for those you haven't. So, without further ado, let's begin the ranking. Number 15, Talia Al Ghul. It is my opinion that The Dark Knight Rises is Nolan's only bad film as of yet, and Talia Al Ghul is a big reason why. First of all, Marion Cotillard's performance does not sell it for me. It is very weak in this movie, which is very surprising considering her phenomenal other role. Nolan's decision to make her essentially have the same motivations as her father made her very uninteresting and unmemorable. All it did was make me wish I was watching Batman Begins instead. Then there is the fact that her plan is bloody stupid and doesn't really make much sense. If you want the destruction of Gotham City, then why not just blow it up once you have the nuclear bomb codes? Why wait six months to do it? Why free the prisoners and our Gotham society? Why risk getting defeated by either Batman or the rest of America? Finally, her introduction as a villain comes way too late into the movie and she doesn't have much time to shine in the 10 minutes she spends as a villain. Overall, she's a very badly written character that undermined Bane's character and ruined his whole other thing, but I'll talk about that later. Number 14, The Blonde. Following secondary antagonist is nothing special to speak of. She's extremely bland and doesn't really have a personality beyond her relationship with the other two main characters of the movie. Her motivation essentially boils down to wanting to be with Cobb, making her very one-dimensional and forgettable in comparison to Cobb, who actually is interesting. At least she doesn't ruin the movie like Talia did, but she is another example of a badly written female character from Nolan, all the way in his first movie. Number 13. Bane. Oh Bane, you could have been such a great villain. His character design is so well done, making him look genuinely threatening. Tom's Hardy performance is amazing, and I actually love the voice he does for Bane. I think it's very unique, distinctive, and threatening. However, the biggest missed opportunity for me here is that he could have actually had an interesting motivation. He started making some good points about the oppression of the common people and the ignorance of the wealthy. He could have been so engaging and interesting, especially because Bruce Wayne is a rich man himself. But I've also been contrasted with Catwoman, who has similar points to him at the beginning of the movie, but eventually grows to trust Wayne. All of this could have made for some interesting discussions about the capitalist society's exploitation of the lower classes. Perhaps Wayne himself could go through a character arc from this, realizing how he contributes to the issues Bane is trying to fix and resolving to be a better person. The Dark Knight Rises had so much potential for thoughtful social commentary, but all of that was undermined by the stupid introduction of Talia al Ghul and the connection of her with Bane. It turns out he doesn't actually care about societal injustice, he just wants to help Talia be, be like a father. His whole plan for Gotham turns out to have actually been pointless all along because Talia is planning on blowing it up anyway. What a shame. Number 12, Andre Sator. This man's main purpose in the movie is so that the movie can have an antagonist, someone to fight against, while Nolan explores the crazy stuff he wants to explore. As a result, he is very shallow, being literally every single male Russian stereotype. His motivations are flimsy, being basically, I am going to die, so that means everyone else should. But Kenneth Branagh's performance of him is quite enjoyable, and he serves his purpose in the story quite well. And I still remember a specific threat to the protagonist that he made that was quite graphic, but worked really well. Number 11, Priya Singh. Priya is actually a pretty interesting villain, especially in how she conflicts with the protagonist on how his operation should be handled. Him stopping her from killing Cat not only makes for a great ending, but shows a little bit of character into the mysterious protagonist of Tenor, and shows how two people can share the same cause but want different ways of achieving it. Unfortunately, she doesn't receive much screen time, being only the secondary antagonist of Tenor, so I can't put her any higher on the list. Number 10, Professor John Brand. Yep, this guy's a villain. For most of the time that he is alive in Interstellar, we believe that he is on the side of our protagonists. It is only when he's close to death that he reveals that he sent Cooper into outer space with the intention of making him start a new habitation of humans on another planet from the human scenes he brought with him, therefore abandoning the humans on Earth who are actually alive. His portrayal is certainly a good twist, and he certainly offers a good counter-argument to the movie's main themes about love. His decision to attempt to abandon the humans on Earth 
raises some interesting questions about necessary evils, making his motivations complex. However, it doesn't really impact the story that much, and is dead by the halfway point. Number 9, Dr. Man. Dr. Man is very similar to Professor Brand in that his portrayal is a good twist. He raises some interesting questions, in this case about whether or not human nature is inherently selfish, and is a good foil to the movie's themes. He is a bit better than Dr. Brand, however, because he poses more of a threat to the characters. Number 8, Walter Finch. Robin Williams' performance as Walter Finch is so damn good. It just proves Williams' range, that someone who is normally a comedic actor can play a villain so well. His quiet voice is so creepy. As for Walter Finch himself, his impact as a villain on the main character is great, especially in the way he's able to manipulate him and the way he justifies his actions is well written. The audience understands why he does what he does. He's not high on the list because the rest of these villains are even better. Number 7, Cobb. Okay, hear me out on this one. Yes, his performance is nowhere near as good as Robin Williams's or Kenneth Branagh's or Tom Hardy's. All of his villains are lower on the list. However, when considering that this villain is the main reason why I like following and that he's the only interesting character in it, I feel like he deserves his 8th place. He essentially carries that movie from its introduction to the protagonist as a burglar who doesn't steal anything, which is a very interesting concept, to a plot twist that he was framing the main character the entire time. That plot twist was genuinely the best thing about the movie. I did not expect it at all, it made sense and it made everything in the movie instantly better. Cobb demonstrated Nolan's great skill with plot twists from his very first movie, and so, while he may not be Nolan's most complex or well-acted villain, he certainly deserves his spot. Number 6, Rajal Ghul. This villain has a curious relationship with the protagonist. He is the reason why Bruce Wayne became Batman, he inspired a lot of Bruce's ideas, especially about being a symbol, and the different ways in which two of them interpret the concept of justice provides two interesting and opposing perspectives on the movie's main theme. He is the perfect villain for Batman Begins. His plan and motivations fit extremely well with Bruce's character arc in the movie, and they are given a bit of poignancy because of how influential he actually is on Bruce Wayne's journey. Plus, Liam Neeson's acting is quite good. Number 5, Scarecrow. Okay, admittedly Scarecrow is not as impactful, complex, or important as Raj al Ghul, but I don't care because this guy is awesome. His fear drunk is such a cool concept, his mask is great, and most of all, his acting is fantastic. People do not appreciate Killian Murphy's performance as Scarecrow enough. His unhinged acting is so fun to watch, and I remember way more than I remember Liam Neeson's performance. That scene where he says, why are you always so serious? Maybe you should lighten up and then proceeds to light Batman's cape on fire. It is one of my favorite moments in the Dark Knight trilogy. Number four, Two-Face. These top four villains are almost damn near perfect. Starting with Two-Face, no one really made us like Harvey Dent, showing us his lawful ways of dealing with crime in comparison to Batman's vigilante antics. And he gave us some truly iconic quotes. It is therefore quite tragic when he has his corruption arc, and Nolan's skillful handling of the arc is what makes Two-Face such a compelling villain in The Dark Knight. Him being used as a symbol of hope in comparison to Batman as a symbol of fear is a good nod to Batman Begins, and creates a great ending when Batman offers himself as a scapegoat in order to reward the faith of the people of Gotham. Number 3, Leonard Shelby. Leonard being the villain of the story is Nolan's best plot twist ever, no question about that. It is so well constructed, fits in with the story idea so well, and comes as a genuine shock. Like, I cannot overstate how big of an accomplishment Memento is. I could not imagine the level of planning that must have went into it, in terms of not making it obvious, and arranging the story backwards in a way that made sense with the twist, and also didn't reveal it to the audience. It's extremely impressive, and one of Nolan's greatest achievements. Number 2, Mal Cobb. Remember how I criticized Marion Cotillard's acting as Talia al Ghul? Well, her acting as Mal is phenomenal. In fact, all the acting in, in Inception is great. Mal is such an effective and memorable villain because of how connected she is to the main character. Her backstory is revealed perfectly. At first, you think she's alive, then you find out she's not. Then, a bit later on in the movie, you find out she committed suicide in a scene that really is quite heartbreaking. Finally, you find out that it, this is all, in a way, Cobb's fault, adding another layer of tragedy and depth to the character. 
and she was so connected to the story and to Cobb that she used what caused Cobb to engage in espionage in the first place. She was just such a well-constructed character. Cobb's grief over her death and wish to be back with her is very believable, making the emotional climax where Cobb is forced to choose between a fake life with her or a real life with his children so uncertain and impactful. She also makes for a really good threat to the story, not only in terms of her threat to Cobb, but in her threat to the other members of the team as well. She is so integral to the story and to the other characters, and so well utilised, making her a great villain, as well as a rare well-written female character from Nolan. Number 1. The Joker Of course Heath Ledger's Joker takes first place as Nolan's best villain. He's iconic. Heath Ledger gives one of the best performances I've ever seen. He has an interesting plan, with interesting ideas, and he is genuinely terrifying. When I watched The Dark Knight for the first time, I had no idea what he was going to do next. He felt like an unstoppable force, a true representation of chaos, and all of this made him a very threatening and powerful villain. Heath Ledger deserves all of the praise he gets for this character, truly one of the greatest villains ever put to screen or to page.